12,000. If any one of you had put money in there in India, in the Indian stock markets two years back, you probably won't be sitting here. You'll probably be out there celebrating your good luck. Because January was 11,000. In January, it just took, I, I, I read something like it took 19 days to get from 11,000 to 12,000. And they're not talking about it stopping. I even heard, read somewhere, analysts are talking about 25,000. So you may want to consider this, but I will not hold liabilities. <laughs> Challenges of doing business in India. Is it all beautiful? Is it all hunky dory? Is it something like red carpet, land of milk and honey? Of course not. No emerging market is. And if it is land of milk and honey, then there will not be returns because the whole world would have rushed in by now. So there are problems. But where there are problems, there are opportunities. But some of the problems that you should be aware of. One, yes, it's got a fantastic bureaucracy. <coughs> they say that the British invented bureaucracy and the Indians fine-tuned it. <laughs> okay. We have made it into an art form. So we do have bureaucracy. It is changing. It is changing, but you know, never fast enough. So you must be aware of it. It's got a fairly difficult operating environment. Many people with low average disposable income, so that is something you have to position yourself. A very dispersed population, socio-economic challenges, a very weak infrastructure which is acting as a real, real negative factor for them at the moment. They need to get the infrastructure up. They have not done anything as close to what China has been able to do, which is where they are lacking, but they, the good news is they have recognized it and they are doing something about it. So if you're going into India, what should you look out for and what, you should, what, what should you try to do? One, understand that you have to adapt. You have to always adapt. Whenever you enter an emerging market, especially as big as the one as India, then you must adapt. You can't go in there and say, I'm from Singapore, I'll do what I want. It worked in Singapore, it better work in Singapore, uh, what in India. Doesn't happen that way. You've got to find a right partner, you've got to develop a deep understanding of the market and the customer base. And then build your scale very quickly, the economies of scale, because that's where cost has to be low. So you've got to make your distribution fast, you've got to build up your manufacturing scale fast enough. Okay, and then always a, a, a global player, but with a local essence, be the local guy. Okay, three areas that require adaptation, strong proposition, smart globalization, which basically means using local resources. Don't try to import all these resources from overseas because your cost is going to go up and some local Indian manufacturer or provider will be you at your game. And finally, building up robust supply chain distribution chains. Some words of wisdom, if I may. If you're interested to go to India, all the UA and only. Don't think you can have their company that thing. I'm excited about FCIs. Tell me this, not, not, not in the exact words, but words to the effect. I'm really excited about India. They want to go to India today. They want to literally invest tomorrow. They want to open a company on the day. They want to list on the fourth day. They want to collect your pay. They want to come to Singapore on the sixth day. <laughs> if you think you can eat and run in India, you're probably going to get kicked and run over. India is a long term pay. You want to go there, make sure you're there a long run. You want to be part of the growth. You're there for the next 20 years. Then you start to see results. You start to see uh, and you can start enjoying the benefits. I'm not going to go through the sectors. I'm not going to wait, but I'll just select some of Actually, these days it's hard to tell which sector in India is not good or not good for investments because really, most of the sectors, not all of them, have abundant opportunities for foreign investors. Some of the key sectors, infrastructure, like I said, complete dirt, you need to pick it up, telecommunication, manufacturing, and within manufacturing, automotive, bio, pharma, pharmaceuticals, of course, agriculture, and then the services. And within services, bank, all those services are growing very fast and doing well. Uh, lots of info here, I'm going to but just let you know infrastructure on the urban development side. They need a huge amount of uh, upgrading, huge amount of investments. And this is something that we have done very well in Singapore. You know how to do organic, how to city, uh, how to run properly. And a number of our media, we have to architect to uh, all our real estate places, like our capital land, and uh, still do well. Road and highways, for those of you who have been on Indian roads, you know they certainly need to upgrade. It's an old joke. If you, want to, if you don't want to spare yourself in the hospital and if your wife is pregnant, take her on Indian Road. She will deliver before you get to your destination. <laughs> so roads have to be upgraded and they are doing something about it. The government itself is spending $13 billion in, in a four-lane project which is basically making four lanes of existing road for 35,000 kilometers of highways are going to be four lane. They are also building up the going collateral north, south, east, west uh, highway. And they are not pretty well. It's a 7,300 kilometer project. Uh, so far they have completed. Uh, 
It is the sixth largest generator in the world, and yet still needs under 100,000 watts. Okay, if it in the power generating or power distribution business, there is no benefit in India to be. Cost and shipping, uh, India used to be horrendous in reputation, very old, lots of delays, it has changed, and yet trade speaking so fast that they can't keep up with it. They still have to keep investing and spending their ports, and uh, you know, they will have to invest some 15 to 20 billion within the next few years to uh, make sure that their ports are keeping up. PSA is certainly a player and paying for more projects. It's disappointed it didn't get some, particularly some, some really large projects very hard to get its hands. And another company that's also gone into it in a big way. Anyone who's been to India will certainly fondly remember that I'm sure. I was being sick. You uh, know, Indian airports have to upgrade themselves, have to change. The traffic is really booming uh, and they need to think about it. They have started on that task or on that track. Uh, there's a new airport coming up, Bangalore, the one in Hyderabad. And they have given up the uh, tenders for, or not tenders, they've given up projects for Mumbai and New Delhi. For those of you who follow the news, you realize Changi is also getting the full out of Changi, but there are other efforts to be taken care of as well, and I hope Changi gets in. Telecommunication, this is a run of this. For a long time, telecommunications were a real bane in India. We wanted a telephone, and there's a fixed line. There, were, there was a time where you had to wait for six to eight months. I remember some people two years. In the old days, in the old days, then it became six to eight months. They are adding. 2 million mobile subscribers a month. And it has just overtaken China as a fast growing mobile kit at the moment, which is why very happy about this investment. Because what don't know behind the scenes is Singtel is really making uh, a kill in, in India. And they're very, very happy. I don't tell anyone because they don't want competitors to come in. But you know, they're doing very well. India does not manufacture much of its uh, telephonic equipment or telecommunications equipment. It's something that will change. Nokia and uh, Motorola and all that are starting to go in and be. Automotive, very few people realize that India is a major, major automotive, not the automotive market, but even all over the scale. The vehicle population is going at 11%. If you have been on Indian roads, you will definitely appreciate that. Sometimes it's a big car park, cars aren't moving anywhere. So you realize the population of vehicles has gone up. But what is also important is India is a major supplier of automotive components in the entire world. In, in 2004, they exported more than dollars worth of automotive components. They have R&D and engineering talent. All the major automotive players today do research and are uh, engineering is in India. Kia Honda, also has motorcycle manufacturers in India. Uh, you have Bharat Watch, which provides all the tools of the chassis. Social week, you few people know that. And Indian automotive players have received more than five banning. I mean, what is actually the, the the automotive industry's highest quality award. And here, only Japan has got that number of awards. It's that much of talent and much of skill and in the automotive industry. Biotech and pharma, India is again a leader in this. It's biotech industry is supposed to grow to 1.5 billion in the next few years. It's uh, you know in the pharmaceutical is doing very well, and it's the fourth largest in terms of production after US, Japan, and Europe. It's start to look like it will be a major supplier for all. Production, not a good story. But lots of potential for interest in it. The food market is about 100 billion. 20 percent gets processed, which means there's a huge upside potential for investing in the food. If you look at the statistics, it's sugar number three, five, number two, huge production, and. It is bought its logistics is in uh, its processing uh, industry sector. It helps sufficiently enough to take to really cope it. Anyone that Indian IT skills will send on to the average Okay, again, get out uh, and doing very well. Pickle is becoming very popular. Lots of us and you are fucking here to get all three under even because the same quality for fresh of the cost is becoming a great challenge. And that's why it's going to be a little up. And this India is a very, very strong competition. So I think we'll have to figure out a way of trying to tie up and get seen the other competition out there. Tourism sector. Huge potential again. It hasn't done very well on this for whatever reason. It has achieved 5 million tourists. Uh, the NI stand for non resident in Indies. So, because the size of India, and if you ask me, there's really nothing that India cannot offer. Everything is there from the plains to the mountains to the, uh, the rivers, the valleys, the deserts, you name it. Okay, India has got all the attractive uh, attractions and everything that can identify it. Is, and yet, it is a of tourism. The good news is it's starting to go very well. Here, I have not heard for you. No? Okay. I'm, I'm not going to actually ask you who's the lady. <laughs> Anyone want to make a guess? Not, not the English, of course. <laughs> Anyone want to shoot a guess? There's, a, there's a, some kind of um, price. Okay. Miss Universe, uh, what art? Get pretty close. Fair enough. Okay, I have a price of English. He's coming over something there. Okay, incident that photo was taken at the three. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.